Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, if you're brand new to this channel, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming on board and checking out what I do and what I talk about and holding space for me. It really means, it means so much to me. <laughs> Someone out there, um, you know, wants to hear my thoughts on things. Um, I'm here and I thought I would just answer a question that someone asked me the other day and uh, I thought I'd try and keep this video a little bit more on the shorter side. Um, I don't have a lot of time. At the best of times, I'm always busy. I'm not sitting on the emails, you know, um, looking at toolbars and looking at things all day. I'm trying to just live my life and do the best that I can with what I have and turning it up, you know, living a really good life requires a lot of work, a lot of effort to sustain the results that I am trying to create for myself. And I will share, and I was just saying this the other day, um, I pulled out the death card from a deck that I had a while ago. It was actually, um, actually acquired this at Costco. If you're in America, I think you might know Costco. Uh, it was like in the bargain bin section and I pulled out this um, deck and I think you guys may know this one. I haven't seen it around very much. It was only, they only did 22 major Arcana cards and um, the card stock was just so beautiful. It was very slippery and buttery and uh, easy to shuffle. And uh, it was like a little, you know, Tarot 101 book. And I pulled, anyway, I pulled, that's where I found the deck. I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent already. <laughs> uh, I pulled out this card and um, I thought to myself, you know, I pulled out this deck. I have the 22 of them and uh, I shuffled them and I pulled out the death card. And I thought, what a beautiful, beautiful death card it is. Uh, very iconic and um, very kind of cutting to the quick, you know, for me. And I, well, the death card usually, <laughs> usually is, um, and it was, you know, the traditional representation of the skeleton, you know, the skeletal system holding a sickle in a field and the field is like wheat and he's cutting the wheat. And it's so symbolic of those season changers and cutting through what is unneeded. Um, and then, and also the seasons, like, you know, that's a time for all things to happen. There's a time for harvest. There's a time to plant. And in this particular, you know, energetic feeling that I got with it, not that I shuffle cards much, but sometimes, you know, it's good to have a bit of a play around with them. And uh, it really represented to me, now is the time to harvest. Now is the time to get that harvest underway. And the first stages of it, of course, is the the planting stage where you plant the seed and you have an idea and when you have an idea you've got like this is a truth you've got seconds to minutes to act on it when you're in that in that catch that wave and you're riding that wave and you've got inspiration oh my god just fucking get get a pen quickly it's coming it's coming like that's how songwriters write you know <laughs> um i used to actually write songs when i was younger I'd sit on a park bench at school and my friend would have a guitar and I'd, you know, come up with lyrics and she'd come up with the melody and it just kind of happens, you know, like you've got to get out of your own way, but you also have to be present enough. Uh, and I was thinking the other day that creation is a dance between effort and surrender, effort and surrender and letting it come, acting on it, surrender. And what a beautiful, you know, thing to, to think of. And, uh, it was, um, yeah. So back to the, <laughs> back to the death card. Now is the time for me to sow. Now is the time for me to, to sow, to do the work, to sow the quilt, to get the work done. And then next year will be, or maybe for you too, next year or in the next coming fall or in the next season's change will be the time to harvest the time to reap the rewards the time to, to taste the beautiful fruit that you have grown for yourself or your family or whoever you're doing it for should always be for you first. And, um, but this is the time to do the work. So, you know, get a plan and get, and get your ass moving, you know, get that Shakti energy through your body 
and just get moving, just start. You know, the hardest part of anything is just starting. So that was my interpretation. And uh, if you know the Reader's Digest um, tarot card deck that they did, you'll know that death card is such a beautiful card. And the sun card, it's just so good. It's so good. I haven't been able to um, find another pack of that, but I would love to find it somewhere else. But anyway, I think it was kind of connected to the... um, Oh, geez. It's one of those traditional Italian versions that they did. You don't come across them very often. But anyway, my point being is that right now, for you or for me, I think collectively, it's just a time to sow. It's a time to get, get into your work and really let yourself, give yourself permission to go there and do what needs to be done so that you can get those results and you know, just one foot in front of the other, you know, inch by inch is a cinch. So that's where I'm at right now. And um, back to the topic of this video today, which I'm going to try and keep very straightforward, is um, the law of polarity. And really interesting question was, you know, um, if, if if I ask for something from the universe like to create more abundance in my own life, does that mean that I'm taking away from somewhere else? So if you like cast a spell, this is kind of spell related. This is spell related. So, um, and it's a really interesting one. And I think no matter what, you know, different practitioners will always have, you know, a very different viewpoint on this and whether it's going to be, um, you know, yes, you, you do shift energy from somewhere else or no, you don't shift energy from somewhere else. Energy is just abundance. Abundance is your birthright, you know? And so I'm going to like, I think I'm just going to answer the question and just give you my, my view on it and my point of view, you know, because it's just another, <laughs> just another point of view on there to throw it out there for you. So <sighs> there's just so many rabbit holes I could jump down in answering this question, but it is such a great question. And fundamentally, what the, you're asking is about polarity, the law of balance, the law of energetic balance, the yin and the yang, the male and the female, good versus evil, black versus white, light versus dark. I don't think it's a versus thing. I think it's we need both sides of the coin. You know, both sides of the coin are just as important. And it is all about balance and about how we all operate from different values and beliefs. And so coming onto this path and choosing the the path that I'm on now, this is such an interesting question. Um, so I'm going to try and just focus on this question today and just leave this video there. And that's where it's going to go. Cause, and it is a, de- a very in, in depthitude question. And I, I don't want to do, I want to do the video justice. I want to do this question justice. So I'm going to try and stick to keeping it as simple as possible when it comes to asking for something. Because when you're praying or even if you're praying for something or you're doing a spell, you are releasing a question, releasing an asking. You're releasing an energy out into the ether, into the universe, to Allah, to God, whatever you want to call it. I just call it source um, to keep it really simple. And you may have, this is the thing, a lot of, a lot of asking, the truth of what I'm saying here is that you don't really, if you don't really believe that you have permission in your head, if you don't believe that you have the right to ask for what you want, then, you know, is that really, are you really putting it out there to really get it? If you don't really believe that you're going to get it, like that you're worthy of it? You know, and that's that's really an interesting one there because um, I think we go through life, we go through all these different stages, we feel everything that we need to feel and we have to come over, overcome all of these psychological challenge, challenges in terms, you know, in terms of having success with life and casting something out, like you're casting a net out into the world. You know, if you're a sorcerer or, you know, um, a magician of some kind. And I think this is coming back to the Baphomet statue, which is really um, an interesting thing where it's like everything is about total acceptance. You know, that statue to me represents balance. It represents the understanding that everything that you want 
is out there. So, and anything that you don't want is out there too. And there can be a point where two truths can exist at one time. And we look at that in the Libra energy in the Zodiac, you know, um, his side is right. Her side is right. Both sides are right. And whatever you choose to believe in, you're directing energy into it. So it's right, whether it's right or wrong, it's right for you. But for me, I think it's, it comes down to the truth of polarity is that if you want to remove, if you want to remove anything or something out of your way, then there has to be something that you do want. So to push something away, you have to take something in to make space for new energy. You have to release old energy. So there is a balancing act. And I find that in Wicca, I find that in nature is that there is this thing with the universe is destroying itself but it's also creating itself. And Mother Nature is, I mean, like, oh, just the perfect uh, example of that is that, you know, us humans thinking that we have this big impact on the earth, and we do to some, co- you know, to some capacity. But, you know, with the issues in today's environment and things like that, but if Mother Nature wants to reset, she can reset in a heartbeat. She will readjust that shit so quickly. We are just merely visitors here on this planet. And we don't own the earth. The earth is not ours to own. We're just passing through. I'm just passing through. You're just passing through. And the polarity in nature is mother nature is constantly adjusting and resetting herself And at any time, at some point, she's going to go enough, enough of these humans, enough. You haven't respected it. You you know, enough of this shit. A really good movie I've recommend again that I've mentioned before would be to watch Darren Aronofsky's film Mother. It's a really, really good one that really addresses the disgusting behavior of humans and their greed you know, their greed of each other and how they behave. They couldn't get along. They couldn't take care of nature or animals. Um, And it's so out of balance. You can feel that energetically, you know, humans, the collective consciousness is so out of whack. Like it's just disgusting. And the ones that just go, no, everything's fine. Everything's okay. (laughs) We're so past that now. Like, yeah. Anyway, that's kind of why I'm making these videos because it's like, we've got such little time left. Who gives a fuck now at this point? But yeah, for many people and many religious systems, the law of polarity doesn't really exist because they, you know, I won't say the one that I'm, you know, if you know anything about the Abrahamic religions, one of the things that they look at is you don't really have the right to ask for anything tomorrow because it's God's choice whether you live for tomorrow. So it's even offensive to ask for something. And I think that that goes without saying, if you're kind of left a religious system and you're coming to, you know, this side of looking at things, spirituality, the occult, I would say that the law of abundance is your birthright. You know, this, the, the magnificent, like the universe is magnificent. It is source. It's everywhere. There isn't a limit on how much, on, on what you can ask for. There is not a limit on, on, on what's out there. It's infinity. It goes on and on and on. So I will say with spell casting, it is tricky because you, you can, you are shifting in energy. And so shifting energy generally requires payment. It requires, a sh- if I shifted it from one place and that place needs, something needs to fill in the, the space of where the energy there was shifted. And that is true. I believe that to be true, particularly if you're working with a demon or an entity or some kind of being on the other side. Generally, you're creating some kind of pact which you are going to uphold your side of the deal and do, and you better do what you said you were going to do, um, which is one thing, but also with a spell is that you're, you're kind of fast forwarding something that's going to come into play or setting something in motion that will bring something closer to you or could push something or someone away from you based on your intention, because we are the universe. The universe is in us. So we 
ultimately have to be vibrating at the frequency that we want to attract that, that spell, that thing to happen, and also hold space enough to know that we deserve it. And that's one of the things that I would say, whether you're working in Wicca or with the God or the Goddess or whatever it is, whatever, like if you're a solo practitioner, whatever you are, and whatever type of um, spell or ritual that you're doing, is that you've got to take a step back and realize that the universe has so much abundance, more money, more energy, more anything that you could ever imagine. And when we get very specific, uh, a hot tip, when we get really specific about the way that we want something, we're narrowing the viewpoint of and how that could actually attract it to us. So it's like, think about the, the vastness of space, the vastness of infinity. It goes on and on and on and on forever. And you want this thing or this person or this situation to happen only in one specific minute, detailed, microscopic little way. You've what you've just done, you have just if you have a very not narrow mindset to attraction or to how you want the your life to be, the world to be, is that you've actually said no to all of the potentials that could meet that vibration that you don't know yet. So it's like putting like trying to trying to ask ask the universe to, to, to shrink itself down to the size of a pinhole, you know, that when you thread a needle through a pin, you've just asked the length and infinity of, of the magnitude of the universe into one specific thing, rather than keeping an open mind and knowing that things can, things will come around in a way that they are, need to come around in a way that you may not have considered yet. You know, I've, I've had friends that, or people that have come into my life and they still are, they come and they go and they're not specifically what I thought in my mind, what I, I wanted of them to be, but they're meeting a need or I'm meeting a need for them that is right. And it is getting that job done. So what I'm saying is, say if you were dating, um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't have some kind of vision where it's like, he's got to be this tall. He's got to have this job. He's got to have this money. He's got to be this. He's got to be this. Because you're just saying no, no, no to a potential connection that could be right for you. So what I'm saying is be open to the abundance of the universe and have a mindset that is in a place that is able to be flexible with how things present themselves to you or into how you interact with that environment. The more rigid you become with energy and with your own intention, the more you're going to shut down potential opportunities for expansion. So go have that cup of tea with someone, give that someone some time, give that, give someone a chance, give them some energy. Like that's um, a really good bit of advice that I would say there. But yes, when considering like energy, I don't believe it's like if I ask for something, say money, I'm not going to take away money from someone who's poor and impoverished in their side of the world. The universe has abundance and I believe that it will give you what you want. And that's kind of how I see it. So you have to really, first of all, you have to really, really realize what it is that you are asking for in a spell and believe that you deserve it, all right? You have to believe that you deserve it. The universe isn't going to run out of energy. It's in, it's finite. It's There isn't this limit of how much energy you can make or how much energy you can take in. You can take in what you need. And the universe is always adjusting and shifting and balancing itself out, just like nature. Nature is an extension of universe. We are an extension of it. So, um, for example, you know, if it was the money spell, generally it has to be in, when it comes to money spells, it has to be asked on what you need, not what you're wanting. So asking for $10 million is, do you really need $10 million? Maybe you just need a couple of thousand dollars to help you around the house with bills. That's more in alignment with what you need. So it goes, it goes by what is needed. So you've got to know what you need as opposed to some whimsical fantasy about what you want. 
And you also have to facilitate that based on your vibrational match. Like I said in my last video, if you have really poor practicing uh, practice with money and you don't understand how money works and you, you don't like money, you think money's evil, you're already a vibrational match. Like I'm saying before, that's going to cut that off. You're already saying no to money. You're confusing the message and energy that you want because you're not in a vibration of what it is. So you're already kind of one foot in, one meh, level five, could take it or leave it. The universe is only going to match that energy. That's how a spell would work. So you have to really believe that you deserve what you're asking for and what you're asking for is you're worthy of what you're asking for. You're worthy of this thing to come to fruition. Like if I brought something to an energetic being on the other side, I have to believe that I have the right and permission to actually ask for what I'm like. This is a valid reason that I'm bringing this here. Yeah, and that's one of the things. You have to be willing to stand in front of source, in front of the spirit, in front of whoever, and be like, this is what I'm asking for, and this is the truth. This is why I need it. Because if you like, you're not going to get something that you don't deserve. You're not going to get something that you don't deserve. And you're not going to take away abundance from someone else. That is a lack mindset. That is religion. That's a religious mindset that even, even how dare you even ask for permission to change your life? How dare you ask for something? It's only God's will, you know, God's will that you can acquire something. God decides whether you live tomorrow. Well, you've just given all of your power away to God. Fuck that. I am God. You are God. And if God existed, you have a part of God inside of you. You have the right to improve your life. You don't need permission to try and fix your life. No one's going to absolve you of your guilt or your sins. You have to face yourself, face your sins, work through those problems, work through the psychological hoops and jumps and have the level of integrity and discipline to facilitate that change and hold that and hold that up to yourself. Okay. So I hope that that kind of made sense. But yes, you have to be willing to ask for what it is that you want and you have to be willing to really understand that you're in sync with your own polarity and understanding that that mindset. I hope that that makes sense. You're not going to take energy away from someone else. You know, you're not going to rob Peter to feed Paul. That's not how it works. That's not how energy works. Okay. <laughs> so the universe is finite. It's infinite. Sorry, infinite. It just goes on and on and on and on. And that's what it is. It's a universe of polarity is that you can shift energy. You cannot compel something to act against its natural nature. That is a violation. Yes. In a spell situation with another person. Yes, you can push it up to a point. You can bring someone back to the door. But if you're not practicing good relationship dynamics with that person, well, then you're going to push them away again. Same with the money. If you don't believe that you deserve the money and you don't believe that you are entitled to to get the money and you have a negative uh, relationship with money, well, then it's like pouring water into a bucket with a hole. It's just going to come back out the other end. You've got to do your end on the side of being a vibrational match to believing that this is possible, that you can turn it all around. And that's what I would say. I'm a big on note writing and documenting like um, lots of ideas and scribbles. And, you know, <laughs> I'm that crazy person that has all these scribbles in my diary and I'm writing down things and I'm always asking and I'm verbalizing what I want. I'm stating my claim. I'm stating this is the life that I want. And I don't put up with or accept anything less than the fucking best. I don't put up with someone else's dysfunction. I don't put up with anyone else's like lack of self-awareness. I just won't do it. If you have lack, if you lack self-awareness, that's unworkable to me. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and I will never, ever come back. That's how I work. I'm not here to fix you. I can recognize dysfunction. Off I go. I wish you all the best. Have a great life. Bye. And you just try and I'm trying to find people that are in their power. 
I'm not looking to get people up to a point where they are like can be on a frequency where I feel received. I'm looking for people that can just receive me right now. I hope that made sense because I don't have the time and energy to like work with that. I, I don't want that. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to live my best life. And part of the left-hand path is, is doing that. And that's just my opinion. You know, that's my opinion on spell work. If I absolutely have no fear in asking for what I want, when I am putting out that energy and that effect out into the world, I believe that I deserve it. Okay. And I'm going to allow the universe time to do that. I've got to be realistic and I have to be able to facilitate that. For example, if it was a money spell, then I would have to have a bank account for that money to go into. You have to have, and you have to be doing the work and having the due diligence to really bring it into fruition and to see that it could sustain in the physical world as well. So that's really kind of like the really the truth of it. No, you're not going to shift energy away from someone else. The universe is like nothing's going to tip the apple cart. Nothing like nothing could do that to the universe. It's not going to happen. You are going to be the one that can change your own life if you're prepared to change something in your head. That's where it all starts, guys. Shifting your physical reality And embracing abundance means that you have to overcome all of these limiting beliefs. Most of them, yes, they come from these religious constructs. You have to overcome them. And then you'll be able to determine that you are worthy of what you are asking for. That you deserve what you're asking for. You have the right to change your life. You have the right to do that. All right? Now, this law of polarity thing where it says with relationships, I don't believe in that. Not when it comes to relationships. You can only attract the vibration that you are most in. And energy doesn't lie. So you can pretend that you're something. You can have delusions about what you are. But what you are energetically is what you are. Like I was saying before, and I might do a video coming up on some spell series, if you'd like me to talk about that, or I might talk about glamour spells, beauty spells, um, magic money spells. Maybe even I might share a bit of a series on some spell work, like, you know, hexing, cursing, stuff like that, um, in a respectful way, because I don't want to, I don't want to piss anyone off, but I'm going to share my truth and share some of what I know. Uh, I will be doing that, I think, in the next few videos and trying to keep them around the, you know, half an hour mark. I think we're at 26 minutes now. So (laughs) I know that you guys are busy. I'm really busy too. Uh, Nothing's going to tip the apple cart. Just, you know, and back to the relationship thing. If you, this is where it gets really tricky. I know this is going to be really hard to hear for some people that are in some kind of state of cognitive dissonance. And there's so many versions of different dissonance as well, but in a relationship, the vibration that you are somewhere in your partner, they have to have that. Vi- they have to hold that same vibration to you. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been a vibrational match to you to begin with. I was talking about that in my love spell video. Is that if you have dysfunction and you're lying to yourself, your partner somewhere has some level of that in them. We only. That that same and it, it stands up so strong to this day, and I'll say it: same recognizes same. Yeah, it just does. So yeah, this can be tricky in relationship dynamics because if you want to change and improve and go higher, and your partner's like, nope, doesn't I don't want to do that. Nope, I don't want to go there. I want to stay here. Well, then you're going to have a conflict of interest. You have to be on the same page. That's why in life, you'll find the witches go for the witches. The sporty people go for the sporty people. Like people with the same in um, moral code, principles, interests vibrate at the frequency that they attract. That's how they attract people. Very rarely I come across people that are polar opposites in a relationship dynamic that is of a functional place. Doesn't really come across much. (sighs) So nothing's going to tip the apple cart. I hope that I've answered that question. The law of polarity is very much a vibration of what you are. And what this is the thing that's interesting when people say positive or negative. Well, that really depends on your point of view. What is positive? What is negative? That's that's determined up to you. Same with karma. You know, the concept of karma is that 
you know, I might do a video on that one next. <laughs> but I hope that you've enjoyed this. Uh, I've enjoyed this too. It's been great to talk. I hope that, yeah, I hope you're having a fantastic week. Um, yeah, leave a comment below if you'd like me to share my thoughts on anything else, um, spell work related, life related. I'm here, I'm around. Um, I had, you know, half an hour break today, so I thought I would jump on. And yeah, wishing you strength and power. <laughs> bye, bye.